Rampage, all you need to know, tips, tricks, and guide. First, I think you should know that I made these Rampage tips as a result of playing the 7 star Rampage 7 star before the update and always the red 7 star Rampage after the 2.0 update. With 3 hertz, scope large, number of areas, 2. With Ibushi, Apex Rathian, Apex Mizutune, Apex Rathalos, or Apex Diablos as the final boss. I almost never play the 6 star or the 2 hertz 7 star, because from what I understand, they give less rewards overall. Okay, I'm going to start by explaining the types of monsters you're gonna see in Rampage. Types of monsters in Rampage There are monsters with red icon, blue icon, and green icon. I call them the jerks, gate attackers, and flyers. The jerks will attack you or your teammates from the ground. The gate attackers don't want anything to do with you. They are just there to destroy the gate to get to Kamura. The flyers will snipe you from above while flying, most of them. We'll get to that later. Now, about flyers. Incapacitate them right away. If not, as stated, they will snipe you or your teammates from far away, hindering you or your teammates from dealing with the gate attackers. I strongly suggest you and all your teammates to prioritize clearing these flyers together first, as they are usually the first to arrive from the sky above. Note. If you don't see any flyers coming from the sky above, then it's probably Rejang. Yes, Rejang is a flyer too, apparently. The only flyer that doesn't fly. The easy way to incapacitate flyers that actually flies is to use the retreat shot using a ballista, or just brute force it with cannon or machine cannon. About the jerks, they practically do the same things as the flyers, but they do it from the ground. So. In a way, they are less annoying because you can actually see when they are targeting you. Now, about the gate attackers. They are the top priority. As stated, they don't want anything to do with you. They are just there to destroy the gate. So, you should always be firing at them whenever possible. Next, to the guns. I will refer to these three guns as installations. I don't know if that is correct. But if this is called an installation platform, that means the object we are going to put here is called an installation, right? I don't know though, I don't really understand English. About cannon. Cannon is, in my opinion, the best installation. It can damage multiple monsters at once, and you don't need to aim for weak parts like a monster's head or tail because the damage is the same on every part of the monster. This is very useful against things like Basarios and Ragna Kadaki, as they don't have weak parts most of the time. The only weakness of cannon is its short range. Don't forget to use the Sea Thunder ammo to inflict Thunderblight to a monster or monsters. Thunderblighted monsters can be KO'd if shot on the head. Also, you can charge the Sea Thunder ammo by holding the Y button for more damage and a bigger blast radius. Don't forget to use the Sea Piercing ammo. I suggest that you use it when monsters are close to each other, as this shot will penetrate multiple monsters multiple times. Next, about Ballista. Always try shooting at monsters' weak parts when using Ballista. Use the retreat shot to flinch a monster. Shoot it to the gate attackers if you see them about to hit the gate or to the flyers. Use the crack shot to stun monsters. Again, preferably use it for the gate attackers to slow them down. Next about machine cannon. Like the ballista, always try shooting at monsters weak parts with this installation and don't forget to use the silk bind shot for the gate attackers to keep them away from the gate. Then, I suggest that you shoot the already silk binded monster with the Q cluster shot. The damage is huge, but the range is very short. The silk bind shot and the Q cluster shot needs to be charged first by shooting at monsters with the Q rapid shot. Next, the big guns. The big guns that deals a lot of damage. I'm talking about Dragonators and Wyvern Splitter. Okay, real quick. 
You must be confused about what a wyvern splitter is. Me and my brother call a splitting wyvern shot wyvern splitter. I'm very sorry. I forgot to use the correct terms when recording for this video. I will remind you every time those words come up. Know this, a wyvern splitter and dragonators are never in the same area. If there are dragonators in your first area, then your second area will have a wyvern splitter and vice versa. Now, how to use them when they are in the second area? This is the easy part. For wyvern splitter, in the second area, the final boss have a specific location where they prepare to launch a big attack on the gate. I recommend that you wyvern splitter them when that happens. For dragonators, use dragon bait to lure the final boss to one of the dragonators and gamble when using the other, or just use your friends as bait to use the other. Now, how to use them when they are in the first area. This is trickier. For Dragonators, basically use it as soon as possible. But don't forget to reload them before the third or final hurt starts so you can damage the final boss with them. If you have unlocked it and used it in the first hurt, don't forget to reload it for the second hurt. Remember, always try to use Dragonators to damage as many monsters as you can. Never use it just for one monster, except when it is the last monster of the herd and you forget to use it earlier. Know this, not all final bosses can be hit with both Dragonators in the first area. There is even one that cannot be hit at all. But don't worry about it because I have tried Dragonatoring all final bosses in both two different first area that have Dragonators for our educational purposes. And here is the result. Apex Diablos can only be hit with the second Dragonator in both areas because of its spawn location. Apex Rathalos in this area, forget it, he will just fly by both Dragonators like a cheating hole. While in the other area, he can be hit with one Dragonator. Fair enough, I guess. Apex Mizutsune will welcome both Dragonators in both areas like a champ. For Ibushi, if you play solo, he can only be hit once with either of the Dragonator in this area because he moves very fast. You have to play at least duo to be able to hit him with both Dragonators here. But on this other area, he can be hit twice even when playing solo. Apex Rathian is exactly like Ibushi, in this area only once if solo, and here she can be hit twice solo or not. If you appreciate those info, like and subscribe please. Next using Wyvern Splitter in the first area. Use it in the second hurt, then reload it before the third or final hurt starts to prepare it for damaging the final boss. If you really want to, you can use it twice in the second hurt if you reload it right away after using it. But in my opinion, you better off just shooting the monsters with your installation after using it once. Sometimes, when you use it against the final boss, it looks like you missed like this. Even though the circle mark is red, there is no damage number. I think that still counts as a hit. The damage number just doesn't show up because we are too far from the target. But I could be wrong, of course. So, to be safe, for Apex Rathalos, aim to this spot. Wait for him to land. Then, hit the button 
right when he tries to fly again. For Apex Diablos, aim to the gate. For Apex Mizutsune, do it like this. And same thing with Apex Rathian. And this is for Ibushi. A tip about Wyvern Splitter. Please do not miss, it inflicts a lot of damage. Important tip when using these big guns in the first area to hit the final boss. Immediately grab the trigger of these big guns after the final boss roars for the first time. Because sometimes these big guns can no longer be used if you are late to grab the trigger. It's kinda hard for me to explain it. But if you have experienced it, that's because you are late to grab the trigger. I don't know if this is some kind of a bug or if this is what Capcom intended to happen. Now, for no reason at all, I'm going to start putting numbers for the next tips. About Iori and Buddies. They will be available to use early after the first hurt has started. Use them right away, or at least in the first hurt. They will be unavailable once the first hurt ended. About Fugen, he deals a lot of damage. He will be available right away, even before the first hurt starts, and will be unlocked again, usually at around the end of the second hurt, or on the third hurt, or when you are already at the second area. So, you can use him in the first or second or early third hurt, and to damage the final boss. Do not bring up Fugen before the hurt starts, because he will attack immediately after the first monster arrives. That way, only that first monster would take damage from him. Usually, that first monster is a flyer. So, for best result, I recommend using Fugen when a wave of monsters has entered the area or almost entered the area. About Hinoa and Minoto, they will be available very soon in the second herd if the final boss is not Ibushi. Use them before the second herd ended, otherwise they will not be available again. They deals quite a lot of damage, and if I'm not mistaken, they can paralyze monsters with their attack. About Utsushi, he will be available in the second herd if Ibushi is the final boss. Use him before the second herd ended, otherwise he will not be available again, just like Hinoa and Minoto. When one of the apexes is the final boss, he will be available very soon after the final boss roars to call the other monsters in the second area. I suggest you use him right away. Utsushi's attack will do quite a lot of damage and put all monsters in the area in their mountable state except for the final boss. So Wyvern ride them, because if not, they can get back to thrashing you and your teammates. Here is the proof. Keep in mind, when using Utsushi in the final herd, make sure to wait until all if not most of the monsters are inside the area, not when they are by the gate, but when they are inside the area. Because Utsushi's attack has a limited range. I think this applies to Fugen too. Another tip when using Utsushi. After you bring him up, get a wire bug quickly, because as stated, he will put all monsters in their mountable state. Another, another tip when using Utsushi. Now. This is important. All monsters will be rideable, right? That means up to four hunters will be riding a monster. If all four of you are trying to hit the final boss while riding, things can get messy 
because you could hit each other too. So, I suggest only two hunters use Wyvern Ride to hit the final boss, in order one by one. Meaning, if one is already hitting the boss first, the other should wait till he or she is done with the Mounted Punisher. The other two hunters will still have the Wyvern Ride, but just to bang the monsters to the wall a couple of times to make them retreat. Any hunter who has done his or her wyvern riding part should get ready to sound the counter gong. Sound it when you see your last teammate doing the mounted punisher. Because after a mounted punisher, the final boss will be down for some time. Therefore, you and your teammates can attack the final boss while it's down while being boosted by the counter signal. If you and your teammates do all of that, I promise your rampage quests will go smoothly and quickly. By the way, if you return to the spot where you attack the boss while wyvern riding, you can find some dropped materials to collect. About Yomogi the chef, she will be available to use soon after the final boss tries to break the final gate for the first time. She will help by shooting at the monster. Make sure to put her not too far from the final boss. About Dragon Bait. Dragon Bait will make the jerks and the final boss focus their attacks to it. Use it to lure the jerks or the final boss to a Dragonator. In other words, put them near a Dragonator. Do not, I repeat, do not put them near a gate. If you do, it's like you are converting the jerks into gate attackers. And if you do that when fighting the final boss in the final area, you are actually helping it to destroy the gate because the final boss's attacks will hit both the dragon bait and the gate. Wyvern Artillery You will unlock this auto installation at around the second hurt if you and your teammates clear enough of these sub assignments. Remember, this weapon is an auto weapon, meaning it will fire by itself. You don't need to mount it every time. Just point it at a direction where you think monsters will pass and either press X or A. I use them with the X option, the flaming beam. In my opinion, it is better than the other one because if I'm not mistaken, this one can damage multiple monsters at once, but I could be wrong. My advice, put them near a gate to demolish gate attackers, but don't aim them too close to the gate like this. Aim them this way instead, because some gate attackers often take a step back before attacking the gate. On the second area, aim them to the final boss's prep location, where they roar and prepare to attack the gate. Auto Cannon and Auto Ballista. These are the other two auto installations. Put them where there is an empty installation platform. I suggest you prioritize using the Auto Cannon over the Auto Ballista. Counter Gong. I usually use the counter gong of the first area in the second or early third hurt. Just use it when things get nasty or uncontrollable. You already know how to use it in the second area, right? Here are all the locations of the counter gong. Here, 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 and here. When you see this sign, a counter signal was fired, that means your weapon damage is being ridiculously boosted for a certain amount of time. Seriously, you'll deal an absurd amount of damage to the monsters. So please, please, please. Stop playing with your installation and immediately get down and hit the monsters with your weapon until they all retreat or until the counter signal time is up. Only use an installation if there are flyers that needs to be brought down. And when they are down, leave the installation again and get back to hitting them with your weapon. I promise. It will make the Rampage quest a lot easier and faster to finish if everyone on the team does this. Wyvern Ride Always I repeat, always Wyvern Ride monster whenever the opportunity arises. You can clear like 3 to 4 monsters by Wyvern Riding. I suggest prioritize clearing the gate attackers first. Gather drop materials and use them to craft elemental bombs or exploding kunai and to clear a sub-assignment. 
put the bombs near a bamboo bomb so they can explode with the bamboo bomb and damage a passing monster. And don't forget to throw the exploding kunai to whatever monster you wish, but I suggest throw it to the final boss or to knock down flyers. Make a custom radial menu specifically for Rampage. The radial menu must at least consist of crafting the elemental bombs and exploding kunai. The rest is up to you. I prefer to fill the rest with healing options such as potions and mega potions. Renew your installations between hearts if they no longer have full health. If you don't already know, just hold A to remove them. About the hunter's weapon. You can of course use any weapon for Rampage and it will work just fine. But I have a suggestion for you. This set using a gun lens will help you clear Rampage quests effortlessly with a bit of fun. Hear me out. First of all, it's a gun lens. That means you will inflict fixed shell damage on any part of the monster. This is very useful for dealing with Basarios one of the gate attackers, when the counter signal is on. Second of all, it's a gun lens. That means we can go anywhere quickly using blast dash. This is very useful for catching up with the gate attackers and bursting them before they touch our gate. Third of all, it's Rathian's gun lens. It is one of the two strongest normal shelling type gun lens for full burst spam play style. And fourth of all, it still is Rathian's gun lens. That means it can inflict poison status to monsters. That means you can help clear this sub assignment. And that means you can unlock better installations. The build only requires three mandatory skills. Artillery level three to increase shelling damage, load shells level two for more shell capacity, and poison attack level three to increase the chance of inflicting poison status. The rest is up to you and your charms or talismans. I recommend that you use this armor set search to make your own optimized armor set. Me, I use Evade Extender level 2 to be more agile, Blood Journal level 3 and Attack Boost level 7 for stronger lance attack, Speed Sharpening level 3 for faster sharpening time of course, and I use Flinch Free level 1 to be able to hunt happily and stress freely with teammates. And the rest of the skills isn't very useful. Finally, this is the switch skills I use for the set. Blast Dash, Ground Splitter, and Quick Reload. Remember to eat for Dango Bombardier and to use the Ground Splitter whenever you can for maximum shelling damage. Oh yeah, almost forgot. A Gun Lens can damage two monsters at once with ease by shelling. Just putting it out there. Guarding when attacked. All three manual installations have the ability to guard. So, if you see a jerk or a flyer about to attack you, hold R to guard so that you and your installation take less damage and you don't get pushed over from your installation. When the Rampage quest started, check for the setup installations 10, 15, or 20 times sub assignment. If it is there, complete it immediately by setting installations up and down repeatedly until you reach the number. The 15 and 20 times version of this sub assignment will instantly give you cannons before the first hurt even started but sometimes there is a bug that makes the installation blow up when being removed making it hard to finish this sub assignment before the first hurt arrives if magna malo appears don't worry just guard if it attacks you and keep attacking the gate attackers until there is none then deal with Magnamalo. If you haven't used the Dragonators or Riven Splitter, it's a good time to use it to hit both Magnamalo and the other monsters. Look closely at the quest counter or the hurt info to see what kind of monsters you will be facing. This is useful to know for choosing which mountable installation to use. For example, when you see Basarios or Ragna Kadaki in a herd like this one, you should prepare by using cannon in that particular herd. At least one person on the team should use cannon in that situation. 
because ballista and machine cannon will only deal white damage to those monsters and white damage numbers means small damage never put characters like yomogi utsushi or fugen on a destroyable platform if you do and you are unlucky the final boss can destroy the platform while your character is still preparing to attack therefore cancelling the attack which is good for the monsters but bad for the hunters so to be safe put them on a platform on the ground or near a wall those are not a destroyable platforms take a wire buck right before the herd starts you can do this by standing next to a wire buck while waiting for everyone to be ready as soon as the herd starts take the wire buck and go to your installation an extra wire buck will help a lot with your mobility throughout the area use the zoom option only when necessary like when the monster is very far and you need to zoom in to target its weak part that way you can see if there is a flyer or a jerk that's about to attack you so you can guard accordingly for the last time as the last tip don't just shoot a monster but always try to aim for their weak parts usually it's the head or the tail of the monster this applies to ballista and machine cannon remember when you hit a weak spot the damage number is yellow not white that's all the tips for now if update 3.0 have new apexes and challenges i will make a new video as continuation of this video containing new things about the rampage from update 3.0 so please subscribe and turn on notification from this channel you can do that by clicking the bell icon and choosing all also if you find this video helpful please leave a like it would really mean a lot to me and if you have any question feel free to ask in the comment section below otherwise thank you very very much for watching and see you next time